Welcome to Grundy Lake Provincial Park. Grundy Lake is located about three hours north of Toronto or one hour south of Sudbury. There are nine campgrounds in the park with a total of 488 campsites, including 10 backcountry sites and 189 electrical sites. The park offers many activities and amenities, including four hiking trails, a discovery program, fishing, swimming, boat launches for kayaks and canoes, but they don't offer rentals in the park itself. And while there are no dedicated bike trails, you can bike along the park roads. And speaking of roads, they are quite bumpy and narrow here, and some areas would be impossible to have two cars passing, let alone two trailers, so something to note. It's a beautiful park, but just remember, you're in bear country and there are active bears in the park, so make sure to keep a clean sight. We are staying at Grundy Lake Provincial Park for four nights and this is our longest camping trip yet. We're going to take you around and show you what the park is like and some of the things that you can do in the surrounding areas. Our drive was pretty smooth until we hit a major accident which added about half an hour to our drive. Luckily, we think everyone was okay, but that poor family's trailer did not make it. We finally arrived at Grundy and went left at the fork in the road to go register. So when you arrive to Grundy Lake Provincial Park, you have to park in the parking area here and walk over to the registration building so that you can register for your site. And then you drive down past the building to get to the campgrounds. There is a small park store in the registration building that offers souvenirs and some clothing items but not much else in the way of camping essentials. This is also where you would pay for your kindling and firewood. And outside the registration building is where you'll find the firewood shed. And like most of the park wood we've bought, it wasn't the greatest for burning. I must admit, I am a little bit nervous because there have been tons of bear sightings and the last one posted in the Facebook group was only a few hours ago, I think about two hours ago, and the bear got right on the picnic table. So I'm a little bit nervous, but we're gonna see how this weekend goes. We headed to the filling station next on our way to our site, and there are two available. I would suggest going to the one on the top of the hill and not through the dump station, because if there is a trailer there and they aren't pulled over enough, you can't get through to use the other filling hose. There is much more room at the filling station up the road. Then we made it to our site and got all set up. We are on site 739 in the Jack Pine Campground and I'm going to give you a quick site tour. Here you can see we have our truck blocking off the front of our campsite to give us a little bit more privacy and our camper little poly pocket is pretty much pulled over as much as we can get it to this side by the trees to give us more area here and we do have the electrical hookup over here so we've just run our wire across the campsite which is not necessarily ideal but we haven't had any problems with it and we did want our camper parked this way to give us the most privacy then at the back here you will find our campfire area which is really nice and what we like about this campsite is that it isn't very open so this is our one neighbor to the left hand side if you're looking at the campground and we have nobody behind us you can slightly see a campsite down there but it's really hard to see and then our neighbors over here have left so there is nobody beside us right now it's a lovely spot. Probably the best spot yet. Yeah. The next day we went out to tour the park, starting with the toilets in the Jack Pine campground, which were surprisingly clean and not too smelly. You're not allowed to have any motorized boats in any of the lakes in this area, but it's actually a pretty convenient spot if you have a canoe or kayak that you want to launch into the lake. Each of the beach areas could be used to launch your non-motorized boats and swim. 
These are the rest stations in the Jack Pine campground area. As you can see, there is a men's washroom on this side. There are five showers in the front here. One is accessible. However, one of them right here is out of order. And then if we go to the other side, this is where you will find the women's washroom and an additional shower. So there are six showers in total. The showers here were kept clean and had hooks and benches. Laundry facilities are located at all three comfort stations as well for your convenience. The garbage and recycling area is located on your way out of the park before the registration building. We drove here with our garbage because I was afraid of attracting bears along the way and it was quite the walk from our site. The main beach area is roped off for swimming, but you can swim in many other areas as well. There are no lifeguards here or at any other beach in the park. Across from the main beach is a volleyball area and access to another lake. When the water is high enough, you can canoe or kayak right under the bridge to get to this body of water. Down by Gut Lake is a large amphitheater where they host various events. There's also a dock where you can fish. I'm not sure if you can see in the distance there, but right over here, there are a couple of kayakers, but there are also some bobbing heads in the water and they just jumped off of that cliff right there. I guess cliff jumping into the water here is an activity you can do if you're brave enough. Grundy also has a free learn to fish program that you can register for and you get a seminar and practical hands-on fishing experience. We are at Poplar Beach in the Poplar Campground area. This is on Gird Lake and there is lots of goose poop on this beach. It's kind of a sandy grass mix and no dogs are allowed here. Poplar Campground area has quite a few pull through spots and they are massive. So if you have a big rig and you want to come to Grundy Lake Provincial Park, there are quite a few spots that you can get in the Poplar Campground area that will accommodate big RVs. So this is one of the pet exercise areas. Pets can be off leash here and your dogs can even go swimming. There are two pet exercise areas and beaches at the park. Grundy also has four hiking trails ranging in difficulty. We did the Swan Lake Trail that ended up being moderate to difficult, though when we started, the sign said there were no particular difficulties, but it was definitely a challenging hike in areas. There is one cabin available to book in the White Birch Campground area, and it can sleep five people. We decided to come up to the hiking point here on the Swan Lake Trail and try and catch the sunset. It's not exactly cooperating with us, but the views are still beautiful. So at 5.30 this morning, there were car horns going off and a little bit of a commotion and we didn't know what it was, but we figured out pretty soon. It was a bear. It was really chaotic because we didn't know what was going on. We were trying to turn our car horn on too. And yeah, so we did finally see a bear here at Grundy Lake. If you're looking to get out of the park for a day trip, you can visit Perry Sound, just an hour south. And if you know us, we like to visit and support local craft breweries, so our first stop was Norse Brewery on our way to Perry Sound. They are building great covered picnic tables, so when it's complete, they will have an awesome outdoor beer garden. Next up was Trestle Brewery in Perry Sound. It was a great location overlooking the water and had a full food menu as well. 
we decided to get some lunch and flights to sample more of the beer varieties. We split a pretzel and pulled pork poutine. Everything was delicious, but I will say the menu was quite pricey compared to most of the other breweries we've been to. The next day, after our bear sighting, we drove an hour north to Sudbury, and our first stop was the Big Nickel. We are in Sudbury, Ontario today, and we are at the Big Nickel. This is a 30-foot replica of a 1951 nickel, and it's the biggest coin in Canada. Dynamic Earth is actually home of the Big Nickel, paying homage to Sudbury's history of mining. Outdoors, there is a science park, and indoors features earth science and mining experiences, including a guided underground tour. They have a gift shop as well, where you can buy nickel-themed items and other souvenirs related to mining. Then we made our way downtown, saw a cool mural, and also found a distillery, so we had to stop. Crosscut Distillery had a lovely outdoor patio and a funky indoor seating area as well. They are inspired by Northern Ontario's founding industries of mining and forestry, and they fuse local and unexpected ingredients into their spirits, like their hard-packed cinnamon moonshine, novel tea liqueur, and their rhubarb gin that I tried here, and it was delicious. On our way back to Grundy Lake, we noticed that there was the Grundy Lake supply post just across the road from the main gate entrance. Here they sold firewood and other camping essentials and also rented canoes, kayaks, and paddleboards. And they even had food on site like ice cream, burgers, fries, and more. And when we finally got back, we took our inflatable kayaks out for the first time. How's kayaking? The wind is really working against me and I'm soaking wet. <laughs> but I like it. It's so far so good for kayaking. Incredibly windy uh, on these inflatable kayaks, which is our first time using them. Might be a little bit too windy for them. We ended up going closer to shore and found some nice calm water to enjoy some leisurely paddling on Grundy Lake. If you're wondering about the internet connection, we are with Bell and Ellen used his phone as a hotspot to upload numerous YouTube videos with no issue throughout the weekend. And general browsing was also pretty fast. Well, we are on our final night here at Grundy Lake Provincial Park and I must say, I absolutely loved it. Out of the four provincial parks we've been to, I would rank this number one because it has so many different activities and things to do here at the park. If you like canoeing, kayaking, hiking, biking, or swimming, there are plenty of things that you can do. You don't even need to leave the park. We left the park to go to Perry Sound and to Sudbury, but those are just bonus activities if you have the time and are looking for something else to do. We had never been to those cities, so we thought we'd give them a try, but really, I don't even think you need to leave the park to have a great camping experience here. My overall thoughts are if you're looking for a park with lots to do, this would definitely be something I would add to your list. We decided to get up super early today so that we could beat the traffic. And we are the first ones, or at least the only ones right now, at the dump station. One thing that I really didn't like about this dump station is that there are two stations here, which is great, but over here, when you're coming in, there are two water filling stations. So if you're here to dump your trailer and there's somebody there, you probably can't get around them. And then you have to wait. So you have to wait someone fill up their tank before you can empty yours. So that's kind of poor planning in my thoughts. I hope this video can be helpful if you're planning your own trip to Grundy Lake Provincial Park. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more travel videos coming soon.